When it comes to property, there's one rule that really stands out. Adding square footage adds value. So much so that building extensions has become something of a national pastime. But is bigger always better? Should I even be questioning this holy grail of the property world? Well, for the sake of tonight's two developers, it would be cowardly not to. That's because in a credit-crunchingly volatile market, this week's builds are real epics. When money's tight all round, it pays to get the most bang for your buck. If you're going to demolish all of this, you're rebuilding it, but just adding another two or three feet on. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't make this house grand and imposing enough, I think there is a really grave danger that you won't hit the million pound mark. So you might as well knock what you've got down and start again. In Bishop's Waltham, Hampshire, tanning salon owners Andy and Amanda Tyndall have just bought this rather ordinary-looking 1950s house. But there's nothing ordinary about their plans because they're gearing up to supersize their property into nothing short of a mansion and looking to make a staggering quarter of a million pounds profit in just eight months. Square footage, we're going to turn this, this little house into a 5,000 square foot house. Um, five bedrooms, four bathrooms, electric gates. It's going to be all singing and dancing house. 60 miles away in Windsor, it's one extension mad couple to another. Metal engineer John Parnell and his wife Patsy are planning not one but two extensions to their property and are equally convinced it's the best way to bring in the readies. We've worked all our lives and we've made a living, but in terms of a future living, and we've we need obviously a certain amount of money to enjoy a lifestyle that we want to enjoy. I mean, otherwise, we're just going to carry on to retirement in the same old way, in the same old... We want to, we want to try, take a chance, really. So we've sold our house. Yeah, so we've sold, <laughs> we've sold everything. John and Patsy intend to be majorly hands-on over a six-month schedule and are relying on the experience from doing up their last 13, yes, 13, family homes to see them through. But this is different because this is the first development, Absolutely. proper development. Yeah, 100%. There are thousands of people out there who think, well, I, I decorated my kitchen, the market went up by thousands, oh, I made lots of money on my own house, I could do developing. But they are completely different beasts. One is a commercial enterprise, the other is living in your home, doing a bit of work, market rises, you happen to end up with more money at the end of it. And I think you need to think much more commercially about a house if it's actually a development. Well, one of the reasons we chose this house that we thought it was a little bit unique and it had some character. So we thought, knowing that we've got inexperience on the property side, if we get a house that's got a chance, a bit different to all the others, then we've got a little bit further ahead of the game. And I'll give you that, because this is a really lovely house. The Victorians built thousands of mock Tudor properties and this two-storey house is one of them. Downstairs, there's a hallway leading to a small reception room, an average-sized kitchen, dining room and garage. Upstairs is outdated with three bedrooms and just one family bathroom. The first extension will be built over two floors on the site of the old garage, giving them a much-improved four bedrooms and two bathrooms upstairs, and two useful receptions downstairs. But then they risk undoing all their good work with an oversized hallway and an undersized single-storey second extension to the kitchen. This will gain them no more than a few measly square feet, but will cost tens of thousands of pounds to build. So your plans are to demolish all of this section. That's right. All the back. And <coughs> all of this. That's yep. right. You're rebuilding it and all you're going to gain is two or three feet here. Yeah. Yes. So what's the point in, in doing that? Why don't you just use what you've got? What do you it's mean by that? The size of it, isn't it? Yeah, because we need to come out to make the kitchen wider. But if you, if you jiggle around with the inside space, 
you don't need to make it bigger. You can use the space you've got and, and save thousands of pounds of rebuilding this. I think there's a much easier way to make an appealing kitchen. Firstly, I'd keep the rear of the property as it is. Then, as long as they also scrap their plans for the huge hallway, there's bags of room to create a great cooking eating area at a fraction of the cost of building a new extension. I've got an issue with the kitchen because it is so poor. It offers very little in terms of sort of feel-good factor about it. Not if you knock all this together. You've still got a massive space, plenty big enough for a kitchen breakfast from living room. Can't that we? means I won't have a utility yeah. room. But it still they comes... They won't have a utility room. So what happens to the machines? Well, they're in the kitchen. Washing machines. I hate washing machines in the kitchen. But you're talking about what you would like, yes. and this is the whole difference right. with your 14th house. This is a development. The last 13 were your homes. Yeah. In a perfect world, you'd have a utility room, but is it really worth, worth spending another £30,000 no. to have a utility 30, room? For 30000 no. Well, that's mm. what I reckon all this would cost to demolish and rebuild. I mean, the bottom line is, I don't think you've got enough money in your budget to do the two-storey extension to the side, let alone rebuilding all the back of the house. Right. John and Patsy bought the house for £425,000 and have a budget of just £62,000. they are hoping to sell for £650,000 and bring in a huge £163,000 profit. That's a practically unheard of 33% return, way above the 20% most developers ideally aim for. It's all based on keeping their costs down to a miraculously low level. Where are you going to find more money when you run out of it? Because I really think you're going to run out of it on this. If we had to find it, we'd have to draw it out of the equity of this property. So you'd have to take a further loan? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And are you happy to do that? No, and obviously not. No. But I mean, if we had to do it, we can't leave it half finished. Because um, that's a joke. We would want this finished. And, you know, it's, I agree with what you're saying, Sarah, at this moment in time. But seriously, we have worked to budgets all on our 13 houses before. And we have more or less come in to budget. And we have done some big work. John and Patsy need to make every penny of their tiny budget count. And extensions only make sense when adding square footage is worth more than the cost of the building works. The danger is John and Patsy's rear extension could fall well short of this essential rule. Over in Bishop's Waltham, Andy and Amanda Tyndall and their two daughters, Chloe and Holly, have no intention of fiddling around with this small stuff. They want to build a massive mansion-sized extension. With a short commute to the city on one side and the stars of Southampton and Portsmouth football clubs on the other, there's some waggish flash cash in the area that a great-looking house could really tap into. But it's more classically styled buildings that command a premium, and this uninspiring property is an unlikely starting point. Hi, hello, how hello. are you? Hi, nice hello. to meet you. Hi, I'm Amanda. Hello, hello. Hi. how are you? God, this is really overgrown, isn't it? Just slightly, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so what made you buy this? How did you find it? it we found it on the internet. We actually just saw it, looked at it from the outside and the plot, and the, fell in love with it as it was. That... It's very gutsy to have seen it on the internet and then just had a quick sort of look through the window and then yeah, put it everyone thinks we're a bit crackers, actually. But... We saw the bigger picture. Um... You don't think it was a little impulsive, maybe? Yes. Slightly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Andy and Amanda bought this house for 600000 without even looking inside it. They plan to spend another quarter of a million pounds doing it up. The idea then is to sell for £1.1 million and clear a £250,000 profit. I think you'll need to spend all of £250,000 pounds on this development. It's a massive project and there's an awful lot of work involved here. And you could easily spend three, four hundred thousand pounds yeah, doing do. this. I'll do it. If, it, if it went to three hundred, I'd be panicking. If it went over there, I'd be severely panicking. I'm sure there is money to be made here, but it's really a question of how much. I think there's a trick to play that could double the profit without doubling the budget. 
In Bishop's Waltham, 15 miles north of Southampton, tanning salon owners Andy and Amanda Tyndall spent £600,000 buying this property without even stepping inside the front door. They hope it can be turned into a millionaire's mansion that will attract the wedged-up locals and bring in a cool £250,000 profit for eight months' work. So this is where the extension is going to be, where we're standing now, and it's coming up to this blue line. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's coming the, the width of the house again. So we'll be standing actually in the lounge. So it's a massive Yeah, it's lounge. about 30, maybe 33 feet by 25 depth lounge. Crikey. Andy and Amanda are looking to add serious value by adding major square footage. At the moment, there are three bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs. On the ground floor, two reception rooms, a utility, a bathroom and kitchen, as well as a conservatory and a garage. Andy and Amanda plan to demolish everything apart from two exterior walls and quadruple the size of the property. Downstairs will have a grand entrance hall leading to a large dining room, even bigger kitchen, and a football pitch of a living room with WC and study next door. Upstairs, a galleried landing will lead off to an opulent five-bedroom, four-bathroom layout. Inside, it all feels highly desirable. The problem is, their design for the outside could end up looking nothing special. I think there's a danger that it could just look like a couple of semis. And I think, really, to get that top whack money, you need something that's m much grander on the outside. And what would you put to make it grander? I think you might as well knock what you've got down and start again. But then is it not going to be dearer? It's going to cost more than a 200, I presume, 250,000 to smash this down, clear the site and start again. It will be cheaper to knock this down and do a new build, then it will to try and work with what you've got. I'll just, I've just got a vision of it. Once the new roof's on and there's new windows, I'll just think it will look very, very nice still. I think they need to rework their entire exterior design. What really reels in the local wags and businessmen round here is mock Georgian grandeur. And there comes a point when you're doing so much to a property, it costs much the same, if not less, to knock it down and start again. But Andy and Amanda have another more practical reason to cling to their original building. We've got nowhere else to live, which is a big thing. Is that partly why you dismiss the thought of uh, demolishing it? Because you needed to live in it? Well, no. Yeah, obviously, yeah, with the two kids and two dogs, we need somewhere to live, so... As the bill goes on, Fingers crossed we'll be coming into the springtime. Yeah. Um, we had two options, either to move right out and rent somewhere. But we said we'd rather stay and see what was going on. So you've got two kids and you're going to try and live in this house while there's major building work and demolition going on. Quite honestly, I think that you'd be a lot happier and a lot more comfortable in a caravan than trying to live on site. When you're adding this much square footage, if you get the design spot on as well, there's a great opportunity to make a phenomenal profit. In Windsor, it's day one of John and Patsy Parnell's six-month build. They've taken a little of my advice and are leaving the hallway, but that's as far as it goes. The plan for the underachieving rear extension that I think should be left on the drawing board gets underway today. But Patsy and I thought long and hard about this. We talked to the builder, we talked to the architect, we listened to Sarah, but today the rear of the house is coming down. Rebuilding the entire back of the house to gain a measly few extra feet of floor simply doesn't add up, and I'm diving in before the bulldozer strike. For the whole of this extension, you're only adding 60 square feet. Around this area, Square footage of newly refurbished period houses like this is around £325 per square foot. OK. So 600, 60 times 325 means that you're adding £19,500 to the value of this house by doing this. Now, you have to believe me that 
Demolishing all of this and rebuilding it is going to cost you £30,000. So you end up spending half of your building budget on something that's going to make you a £10,000 loss. Where you look at the front, it's so pretty. You look at the back and it's not pretty. And really what we need to do is just give back the workmanship, I think, at the back. Sort of. I mean, this isn't a, a gift to history or a labour of love. This is meant to be business. And there's another good reason for cancelling this extension. They simply can't afford to build it. That's because John and Patsy have allowed just £39,000 for labour and materials to rework the entire property, and the other figures are just as tight. There's £3,000 for electrics and £5,000 for plumbing. Only £6,500 has been set aside for their prize kitchen and £4,000 for two bathrooms. With fees of £4,500, John and Patsy's entire budget is a highly unrealistic £62,000. The only chance they have of hitting that budget is to ditch the second extension. This is a business, and if it's a business and you're trying to make money, you shouldn't be trying to spend money for the sake of it. You're right, it is a business, and if it is a business then, Sarah, we, we want to produce quality. Well, I think we'd be putting up a second best. And, and we I don't think do if that. we're going to sell this house and maximise our profits, I don't want to put up a second no. best. It's not about settling for second best, it's about making shrewd business decisions. The moment I leave the site, the rear of the house comes down. Now there's no going back. In Bishop's Waltham, it's the start of Andy and Amanda's eight-month build, and the demolition gear is also out in force. But this time, I don't think they're going far enough. They're project managing a budget of £250,000. They've got £145,000 for labour and materials, but so much needs doing, the money could be better spent knocking down the entire house and starting again. The one thing that we're definitely not going to do is smash the house down and start again. Uh, we're going to work with what we got and turn it into something very special, aren't we? Yeah. I think Andy and Amanda should be giving themselves a clean slate so they can rework the entire exterior. Because while adding major square footage should add value, to maximise the profit, the market has to be carefully researched as well. This house is just a 10-minute drive from their development. With four acres and 7,500 square feet of living space, it's on a slightly larger scale than Andy and Amanda's, but it's on the market for a staggering three million pounds. While the interior may be a tad OTT for me personally, it shows just how glitzy people in the area are prepared to go. There's a lot of people with a lot of money around this area. And we're very close here to Southampton Football Club, so dare I say it, there are footballers' wives with a lot of money, and, and this is the kind of house that really appeals to them. Personally, I don't like this at all. This may not be to your taste, and it may not be to my taste, but there is a market for houses along these lines. And it's about the wide frontage, the pillars, the symmetry of the building. I just think this is a big sort of to be honest, it's a status symbol. Have a look at what I've got. And, Absolutely. And it that is. is it. And that is it. It's got no character at all. This specific market want a house that is grand as you drive up to it, that impresses their friends. It's about how it looks as yes. you go up to it. Mm. So if you're doing your house as a development to sell, this is a safe bet. The look that we're going to achieve will be much better than this. Yeah. Do you not think? I, th I think so. I get the feeling that I've lost this battle, have now You're on the path, you're keeping going down it, and you're not going to change your mind. So. Yeah, I'm happy with the design, um, and I'll just, to be honest, I'm sticking to my guns on it. In Windsor, John and Patsy are now six weeks into their six-month development, and are cracking on with the controversial rear extension that doesn't really extend very far. Now it's starting to take shape, Patsy is having second thoughts about whether the kitchen is big enough to have a separate utility room after all, and is changing her plans. Basically what we could do here is if we wall across there, I can have the utility there. 
The utility room will double as a boot room and she's moving it away from the back door and the muddy garden. That's a fairly big problem. Now, what's wrong with this situation? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what's wrong? Uh, well, you're wet. Come on, you've got well, you've ruined things. our carpet for a start off. My boot room when I was a little girl wasn't the other side of the kitchen. You've <laughs> spotted the deliberate mistake in our oh, we won't, we won't let her in. I'm not letting her in if she does that. Right. But if you're going to have a utility room, you that need right to make place. sure that it's in the right place and that that house is zoned right. At the moment, you're mixing and matching your living and, and working areas. You'd be turning what should be a lovely, relaxing part of the room into a, a walkway for from the back door to the, to the boot room. You have the opportunity, now that you are building this extension, to put the utility area next to the kitchen. Yeah, it's a good idea, isn't it? I think it's a very good idea. I fully understand what you're saying, and the demonstration was perfect. If John and Patsy are spending unnecessary cash rebuilding the back of this house, the very least they can do is make the most of their new layout. In Bishop's Waltham, the Tyndalls are four months into their eight-month build. Quadrupling the house to four times its original size is a mammoth task that will leave only two of the original walls untouched. Yet despite the chaos that surrounds them, the family are still living on site. This is my kitchen and bathroom, which I now have to wash up in, um, which is can be quite embarrassing if someone needs to do the loo when you're washing up, but um, you just get on with it. My friends think I'm absolutely mad being able to live like this. I was quite a house-proud person before, and, um, and now I'm having to wash up in a downstairs toilet sink. Living on site, especially with kids, can be extremely hard, but it can also be tough on both the schedule and the builder. We want to start stripping the roof, get the timbers off, right. and then taking the shell down. But obviously, we can't do that if you're still living in the house. We could do with you uh, trying to find somewhere to go ASAP right. so we can get the roof off. Um, so, when are you planning on taking the roof off? Well, we wanted to do it next weekend. So, really, we need to get out. You do. Find somewhere to live. Yeah. Okay. The only sensible option is to move the entire family out, leaving the builders to get on with their work. And he's having none of it. I love the beard, keeping an eye on things. Just make sure the build is going to time and schedule. Um, it's not a problem, really. We've done it in our old house. We had the roof ripped off and the kids were little babies, so it's not going to be a problem. I'm just looking forward to it, to be honest. Not in weather like this, he's not. Just days after the roof comes off, torrential rain sets in. While the furniture has a temporary residence, the family are effectively homeless. The build stalling, there's the children to think of, but I think I've got a solution that won't break the bank. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> I seem to have arrived just in the nick of time. Oh, you have, Sarah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> First well, time as well. It, it looks... I, I think I have the answer to all your prayers. It must be pretty damp in that house. It is. Just a pad. You're a saviour. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in to this gorgeous home. Happy you know. Quite honestly, this is the perfect solution. You've always been a little bit resistant about moving out of your house. Yes. Just being here all the time, so I keep an eye. There's a lot of deliveries now, so I just want to be here. This comes with all services included. So you've got all your services already working. Yeah. It's clean, it's dry, it's, it's right on site, so you can watch all your deliveries coming and going and you can be here for questions. It was getting a bit hair raising in the end, wasn't it? Yeah. It is £750 a week, yeah. but having said that, for a couple of months, which is all you really need it for, yeah. it's six or seven grand for that time. You couldn't rent somewhere on a short-term let, and you're not on site. Yeah. So, are you happy with this as a solution? More than happy. Yeah. Some. Oh, great. I've never ever been in one. It's fantastic. No, it's just, yeah. It doesn't get better. Right. <laughs> Andy and Amanda waste no time moving in. I think the motel is wonderful. Best thing I've been in for a long, long time. Very surprised. Excellent. I'm sure we'll be fine in it. 
It's just going to be nice to live in something that's clean and doesn't smell musty and isn't dusty and dirty. Just going to have to work my way around my little new home. In Windsor, John and Patsy are now halfway through their six-month schedule. They'd always under-budgeted at £62,000 for the whole project, and now it's catching up with them. It's very apparent that the old roof, as much as I wanted it not to be, was shot. To repair it isn't a viable option because the damage is so great. So basically, I've just bit the bullet and said, right, we've got to replace all the old roof. So it has been a, a bit of a budget buster, to put it mildly. The small amount of square footage they're gaining at the back of the house is starting to look like a very expensive indulgence. In Windsor, four months into their six-month development, John and Patsy Parnell's rotten roof is being fixed. It's costing a whopping £20,000 that was never budgeted for. They should be pulling back. Instead, they're making changes. I want a bigger hall because I think it just gives that central sort of focus on the, on the middle of the house, don't well, you? The hall becomes the heart of the house. Yeah, and the rest, and, and the, the, rest like of the rooms that. just sort of like octopus tentacles come off of it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. John and Patsy may want a hall to rival their royal neighbour, but it's a little out of proportion with the rest of the house. What's more, it eats into the rear extension, reducing space and light. So what we intend to do is run some nice, bright ceiling lights in all three rooms. With the walls painted, a light floor, we can create a lot of brightness that isn't here at the moment. Light bulbs just aren't going to cut it, because it turns out John and Patsy have made this problem considerably worse by fiddling with their plans again. When did you decide to change the doors from how the drawings are to how they are now? They're, they're three foot frames. Yeah. And the next frame up is four foot. I would have had nothing in the middle. I might as well have gone to one big open door. So why? Two four foots. I don't know. You like the idea too. Don't blame doors. me. It's no. on the drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Not having double doors is seriously blocking both the views and the light from the garden. What John and Patsy really need to do is rip out the central pillar, but they won't. So I've got a solution that won't improve the view, but will bring in tons of natural brightness. For around £500, one of these flexible mirrored pipes will pump in the equivalent of 440 watts of free outside light. What this effectively is is a tubular mirror. One end goes through the roof and has this cap on to stop the rain coming in. And then the natural light bounces down through the tube into a dark room. So with this on, it's like that. Take it off, and that's the difference it makes. It's stunning, yeah, it's, that's amazing. And considering it's quite dark outside as well, it's not a bright day. So I think you need to make a decision, really. What do you reckon? I like this. Oh, definitely this. This is the one for me, isn't it? What do you think? For you, for us. Oh, this, is the, this is the one for our potential buyers. In Bishop's Waltham, Andy and Amanda are six months into their eight-month schedule. There's still a lot to do, but the sheer scale of this development is now clear to see. It's a stark contrast to the motorhome, which, though useful, was always going to feel tight on space, especially after three whole months. I am now counting down the day that I get into my lovely new house. I will be about another five weeks, I would think. I would think you'd four be looking... weeks and four days, four and a half days. Yeah. Not that I'm counting or anything. I will say at least, at least a month. So it's an enormous relief that four weeks later the family are back into the development. But now the huge space on offer is proving to be a major headache. The problem we're having with this size of these rooms obviously is decorating it because it is such a stupidly sized room and I am now having to think about how to furnish them properly so they, they look at their best. 
Dressing and decorating a property that is so big it can double up as a roller rink isn't going to be easy. To get top whack, the inside needs to be seriously swanky. So I'm taking Andy and Amanda to this huge development just outside Southampton to show them exactly what's expected. It's for sale at £3 million and the interior design makes the most of the massive space. First impressions as you come through the front door, you need you need people to be kind yes. of bowled over mm. by by it, and and here you are. Seems good. With huge spaces, you can't leave any of the design up to chance. Expect to spend big on items like a feature staircase and flooring. After an hour and about having the edging, we didn't put an edging or. A different colour in it. Just a relief. Yeah, yeah, just a bright I think colour. it, yeah. looking at it now, it looks nice, doesn't it? From the hallways right through to the kitchens, the golden rule is the bigger the space, the bolder you have to be. In a big space like this, you can't afford to go off-white. If you're going to use a colour, you've got to use a colour. You've got to do it, and you've got to do it with knobs on. And I think that that's what makes big spaces work, is being bolder than you normally would yeah. be. Here they've got a whole bank of ovens instead of one oven. They've got two dishwashers. Uh, every, every possible luxury you could need. Yeah. It's not my taste. We were thinking of going for more neutral colours, so it was a blank canvas for someone to move in and sort of perhaps put their mark on. I think at this end of the market, when people are spending millions of pounds on a house, they don't want to come in and start decorating, so they do want it designed for them rather than completely a blank canvas. So whilst you don't want it to have kind of leopard skin on the ceiling and the walls, you have to design it to a certain extent. Major design statements are key, but when your sitting room is as big as most people's entire home, how do you fill it up? You've either got to use much bigger furniture or more furniture, and in here they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sofas, which anyone normally would think was excessive, but it fits in him, it works really well. Yeah, it does. This, this is definitely, definitely open yeah. my eyes now. Um, yeah. The, the dressing, if I thought it was important before, I'd, I'd definitely do now. I think we're going to have to get some more furniture. I, think, I, think <laughs> I don't think we're wrong there. <laughs> In Windsor, right on their six-month schedule, but certainly not on budget, John and Patsy's development is finished. On the side of the property, the first of their two extensions blends seamlessly into the original house. Allowing for a fourth bedroom and second bathroom upstairs, which should add important value. but I think the ground floor is less successful. To me, the hallway has serious delusions of grandeur. In a way, this is perhaps the house's downfall because it's such a big hallway and then it's a, almost a bit of an anticlimax when you go into the other rooms and they're not... You'd expect the rooms to be bigger than the hallway. I like big hallways. Um, and, um, you got one? Yeah, I got one, yeah. It just so <laughs> happened it all worked out. That's right. You know, it's always handy, Sarah, because if you're having a party, you can have it in the large hall yeah. and well, keep <laughs> the rooms tidy. <laughs> the rooms either side of the hallway may feel small, but at least the detailing is spot on. Traditional features have been given a contemporary twist that really play up to the property's charm. But delightful as it all is, there's still the old issue of the rear extension. I think it was a massive amount of effort and money for not enough gain. Though they've done what they can, continuing with their stylish interior design lit up by the sun pipe. You stepped to your guns here, didn't you? You knocked the whole of the back of the house down so that you could get the width. But it's cost you a lot of money, and actually, in reality, you haven't actually made it a much bigger house. It's still pretty much what it was before. If you remember, the roof sloped as well, and we had no view of the garden. So although we might not have got a great deal of space, we've got a usable space now. So you stand by your decision to knock this down and rebuild it? 100%. I mean, the truth was, what was here wasn't serviceable, was it? 
I don't think we'll ever agree. The end result is that John and Patsy spent serious cash on their whole development. Now, you bought the house for 425, didn't yes. you? And you were planning on spending 62,000 refurbishing it. Yes. How much did you actually spend though? We actually spent 158,000 pounds. That is quite a lot <laughs> of Yeah, money. I think the 62 was totally unrealistic. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I did you agree ask with you. us. I did ask you, and you said 60. <laughs> John and Patsy went over budget in just about every area. Labour and materials rocketed from £39,000 to £75,000. Electrics doubled, coming in at 6000 as did the plumbing, which came in at 10000 the £6,500 they planned to spend on the kitchen rose to 14000 But they came in under budget on the bathroom, spending £2,500. They hadn't budgeted for furnishing and decoration costs, which came in at £25,000, and fees and professional costs shot up from £4,500 to £25,500. Not surprisingly, John and Patsy's 62,000 budget ballooned to 158,000 pounds. So you need its urgent sale time. You were hoping to sell for 650. What What do you think it probably is now worth? Perhaps now we could be looking. I, I think hope, yeah. 750. 750 might be a possibility. At 750,000, they would just about hit the 163,000 pound profit they'd hoped to make. Got great curb appeal, it's a very pretty house. I've done that extension well. Now I like this kitchen, very nicely done. What a fantastic hallway. Much more spacious than you'd expect from the outside. A little on the small side there, it's a shame. I think it's a bit dark and I think it's a little bit too large. A lot of wasted space here, really. In my opinion, I would market this house at £675,000. I value this house for £685,000. I value this property at £695,000. I have had three valuations right. done mm. on the house, and they have come in at 675, 685, and 695. What does that leave us in? How much money do we make? Uh, that would make you, from the lowest valuation, 92000 and the highest valuation, £112,000 pounds from this. So it's a profit though, isn't it? It's it's still a lot of money. Mm. Oh yeah, that's a good With profit. Six months. You do look a little bit disappointed. I mean we'd have liked more. But if that's what it is, that's what we have to deal with, isn't it? Did it make it worthwhile? Oh yeah, crikey. Yeah, yeah, yeah hundred grand's still so a fair much. old kick, isn't yeah, it? There's no I mean, two ways six about months, it. That's not bad, is it? No, and I mean let's face it, if we And we're doing something we like. We do something we like. And if we move on to the next one, we can mm. probably make more profit out of being more realistic, hopefully. Mm. I might work the budget out and use a calculator next time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> John and Patsy put the property on the market for just under seven hundred thousand pounds, but sell five months later under the lowest valuation at £665,000, making them an £82,000 profit. That's a 13% return. Not quite the 33% they were after, but not bad in a seriously cooling market. Over in Bishop's Waltham, after nearly 10 months of hard work, the development is really starting to come together. The decoration is well underway. Outside, the grounds are being landscaped. And Andy and Amanda are feeling good about smashing through the million pound mark. No one is going to knock it who's got any idea of what they want for their money. There's nothing they can knock. Everything is top dollar in it. <laughs> In Bishop's Waltham, nearly four months over their eight-month schedule, Andy and Amanda have finally completed their hugely ambitious first development. And boy, does it look different. What was once a modest 1950s house has been given one major dose of steroids.
This five-bedroom mansion is now four times its original size. My goodness, it's big. That is <laughs> not too big, it, though. <laughs> it is. It is a big old lump of building, that isn't it? <laughs> I still fundamentally think that there could have been a more impressive house on the plot. I don't think if we'd have gone, I don't know, different shapes and things, it would have got any more money. I just look at it and I kind of think, does it look a bit like a care home from the side? Care home? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> a care is home. That, is that very rude? Yeah, at the moment I think it's, it looks like a new build, I agree with you. But I think once... Um, the trees and the grass are taken and it's, we're back into spring. I think it will fit in. Even though I'm not entirely convinced by the design, the sheer size of this property holds a premium in itself. Does the inside fulfil its potential, though? Oh, now, this is lovely. You see, this is the kind of hallway that you'd expect from a million-pound house. It's exactly what we wanted. We the, the oak stairs, which were a hell of a lot of money, they just, they do make the entrance. A grand staircase is just the kind of extravagant feature a house of this size needs. And Andy and Amanda have done well to carry the luxurious feel on into the rest of the house. Cracking the interior design of their massive kitchen was always going to take a bold statement. And acres of black granite fill the area with suitable opulence. This is great, this room. It went great to the kitchen. What you said originally when we looked at those houses um, last year about keeping the wow factor going, and we've, we've taken that on board, haven't we? Okay. And then we think we've got that. You're coming through the, the hall into here, and it's, it is getting better, I think. Moving through to the living room, you're really hit with the incredible space this house offers. Although, perhaps understandably, here Andy and Amanda found it a little harder to get the design 100% quite right. God, it's so bizarre to think that this whole room is the entire original house, isn't yes. it? Yes, this was yeah. everything. It does feel that you're just a little bit bowled over by the size of the rooms and you're not quite sure what to do with them and you're like, OK, so we'll just kind of keep it neutral and put our furniture in, which is completely swallowed up by the room and... Yeah. It is tricky to fill rooms right. I yeah. Think, on a smaller development, I think it's an absolute doddle. But this, you've got to get it spot on, I think. I think you have to be bold with the interior. When you look at the sofas and the curtains and the pictures on the walls, you've, you've kind of started to really think, OK, we can, we can be a bit daring with this space. Upstairs, the master bedroom again could do with a touch more furniture, but there's no denying it's truly regal dimensions. And next door, the master suite is up to the mark with twin sinks, walk-in shower and designer bath. What I want to know is, did they manage to keep to their £250,000 budget? So how much did this beast of a development cost you then? We come on at three fifty in the end. So I mean, when you started this, you were you were um, saying that you'd be quite horrified if you spent more than three. Did, was there a point at which you just thought, oh crikey, where's this going? Yeah, um, yes. At some stage, it just seemed to be sort of eating money, and then sort of when we got our head around the size of it, we should have. We did realise it was going to eat money, but it was sort of never ending. What do you think it's worth now? It's taken a year of our life. We've lived in motorhomes, mm. and it's been quite stressful. Yeah. So to sell this, I'd want more than 1.1. So you wanted 250,000 profit when you started this project, and a year on, you still want 250,000 out of it, basically. Yeah, more or less. Yes. I, th I think we would stick to our guns on that. I think so. To get that quarter of a million pound profit, Andy and Amanda will now have to sell for 1.2 million pounds. I love this central island. I think the island works really, really well. I particularly love this galleried landing. It really has wow factor. Wow, impressive room again. Very nice en suites. Lovely room. It seems to be caught between a rock and a hard place. It's neither 
contemporary and ultra-modern or old in character. Had it been styled more grandly, it would appeal to a wider audience of buyers and it would achieve a higher price. I would value this property at £950,000. I would value this property at £1.1 million. I'd value this property at £1.3 million. We have had three agents around to value it and they came in at £950,000, £1.1 million and £1.3 million. Variation there. <laughs> Big variation. Yeah. So at the bottom valuation, that would make you break even. If you sold at the highest, you'd make 350000 which would be a great profit. Yes. Mm. Does it not concern you that they might be right at 950? No, I don't think. I, I think, think anyone valuing this under under a million needs their eyes tested. The lower two valuations did both say that if this was a more architecturally designed and ostentatious house, that you should be able to add between one and two hundred thousand to that price tag. There's nothing all to change. I'm, I'm still happy. I'm happy it's still worth 1.2 all day long, and I will stick to that. I just think the square footage and things that are around and location and the size of the plot, it's worth a lot more than people think. Andy might be happy, but will it bring a smile to the face of potential buyers? Not designed for the space they've got. It definitely looks extended. Oh, that's nice. Love the hallway. Wow, wow. very imposing entrance. Oh, wow. You could live in here. It's fantastic. This is beautiful. Uh, furniture's a bit lost. Oh, that's lovely. Nice shower, Mitchell. Nothing at all that I didn't like about the house. I'd definitely put an offer in, definitely consider it. Overall, I liked it on the inside. However, I do feel the outside lets it down quite a lot. I feel there's a bit of a disparity between the style of the inside and the style of the outside. This mammoth property could clearly command a major profit but I think there would always be more money in it with a sumptuous design. So your plans for the future for this house, will you just stay put until you get 1.2 or more? Yes. I think what we do, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait for the gardens to mature. And then, obviously, once the house has been here a while, I think it'll look a lot better anyway. Right. So, yeah, I think at the moment, it looks like a brand in. new yeah. house on a massive plot. Yeah. I think once the, the grass is up, we've planted and I think it looks a lot different and I think right. maybe even more money you don't know how two million you never know, well, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> joking apart that's not far off what Andy and Amanda might have been looking at a week later one of the viewers makes a 1.3 million pound offer which if it went through would make them a potential gross profit of 350,000 pounds so is that ultimate proof that adding square footage will always add value? The bottom line is, it usually should do. But there are two basic rules to remember here. The work you do shouldn't cost more than the value of the space you add. And however large you go, the only way to really maximise your profit is to hit your market square on. Next week, it's double trouble with double developments. We're not defeated. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to put us another four grand over. I can only recommend you have it done. Any leaks or any damp that comes in on that stand them walls, I'm not held responsible. Okay. Well, tomorrow night at 8, four celebs throw their competitive dinner parties in the return of Come Dine With Me. Next tonight, from Love Shack to Log Cabin, and it only took 16 years in Grand Designs.